Hello, and welcome to Virtual Science Saturday, part of Hagley at Home. My name is Leanne, and today's topic is Trophy Triathlon. The engineering design challenge is to build the tallest trophy that you can that can balance a bow on top. The topics that we'll cover are related to civil and structural engineering, and some of the concepts are load, foundation, compression and tension, and center of gravity. Before we get started, make sure you have your parents' permission to use any of the materials that you find around the house in building your challenge. And leave any space that you're working in cleaner than how you found it. Finally, there are some try it at home challenges throughout the video, and although they aren't dangerous, please get your parents' supervision or participation before trying them out. All right, let's go do some science and engineering. Jenga is a Swahili word for build. Humans are natural born structural engineers. Watch a child play with blocks and you will say they quickly learn that the most stable way to build vertically is to stack the components of a building. Jenga is a game in which you start with a tower of 54 blocks built three blocks across, 18 levels high. The objective is to remove a block from the body of the structure and place it on top using only one hand at a time. Eventually, the tower becomes incredibly unstable and the person who finally knocks it over loses. Buildings and structures are vulnerable to the same forces that can topple a Jenga tower. Forces like load, tension, compression, torsion, and more. Let's take a look at these concepts more in depth to get some ideas about building our trophy towers. Load is one of the most important principles of structural engineering. It is the weight or mass that is supported by the elements of the building. One of the main tricks of Jenga is to remove the loose pieces, which are easier to remove without disturbing the integrity of the tower, because if they're loose, then they can't be load-bearing. Have you ever heard of a load-bearing wall? A load-bearing wall is a structure that cannot be removed from a building, say when remodeling, because they bear or hold up the load or mass of the floors above. Now, when an engineer is designing a building, they need to consider a building's load path. Where is all the weight of each floor being distributed to hold the weight of the floors above? And this is important because each level of a building needs to be able to support the weight of all the floors above it. There are three different types of loads that can occur in a building. Let's take a look at them. Dead loads are the forces applied by all of the static or non-moving components of a building, like beams, columns, concrete, and drywall, basically all of the structural elements. Live loads are the forces applied by all of the moving elements, including people, furniture, cars, and normal weather such as rain, snow, and wind. Dynamic loads are live loads that occur suddenly and with great force. Examples include earthquakes, tornadoes, and hurricanes. foundation is the lowest load-bearing part of a building, typically below ground level. When building a Jenga tower, whether you realize it or not, the first thing you do is consider where you're going to build it. Clearly you wouldn't choose a wobbly flimsy card table. Why would that be? Here you'll see me building a Jenga tower on a chair. Think about how this might be different than building it on the table. As I build it, it seems pretty sturdy, but then as I start playing and putting the pieces on top, it falls much sooner because the foundation is not as sturdy as it would be on a table. Similarly, engineers wouldn't choose to build a high-rise building on loose soil, as the structure might settle unevenly, resulting in cracks in the walls or even a collapse. Instead, all modern buildings are built upon foundations, which are purposefully engineered to serve a few purposes. First of all, foundations transfer the load of the structure into the ground. If the structure sat flat on the surface, then the entire load of the building would be pushing on its lowest elements. Foundations work to have the load pass through the lowest elements and be dispersed into the earth below. To demonstrate the benefits of anchoring a structure in the ground, take a yardstick, broom handle, or something similar and try this. Place the end of the pole on the ground and balance it so that it stays standing upright on its own. Blow on it or give it a little light push and see what happens. What did you observe? Now push the stick into the ground an inch or two and do the same thing. Does it fall over? Take a moment to pause the video and ask yourself why did pushing the stick into the ground help stabilize it? Try using our new vocabulary that we just learned. 
Foundations physically anchor the building to the ground, which is extremely important for very tall buildings. For buildings built on soft soils or sand, steel piles are driven down into the earth until they reach bedrock, the deepest part of the soil. Then a reinforced concrete foundation is built around those piles to create a firm anchor on which to build. You will need a partner for this activity. Have your partner stand with both feet together and arms at their sides or cross in front of them. Give them a push on the shoulder sideways and see what happens. Now have them stand with their legs wide and push them again. What did you observe? Building wide supports on a structure helps stabilize them in the same way that taking a wider stance helps keep you from falling when being pushed. Building wide supports or bases can stabilize buildings against earthquakes or heavy winds from hurricanes. Tension and compression are two basic forces always at work in structures. Tension is a pulling or stretching force. Compression is the crushing, squeezing force applied when two objects are pressed together. The top surface of the beam would experience a compression force, a shortening. The bottom surface of the beam would experience tension, or stretching. What structures do you think engineers have to be especially careful of building when thinking of tension and compression? I'll give you a hint. Think of something that connects two pieces of land separated by water, a valley, or another road. Did you guess bridges? Jenga towers don't get tall enough or heavy enough for us to actually visualize compression and tension. Just know it's there. Imagine building a Jenga tower on a table that is then lifted on one end. What would happen to the tower? More than likely, it will topple over. The center of gravity of a structure is a specific point where all of the mass of the structure is evenly distributed around. It can also be called the center of mass. The force of gravity acts on all parts of the structure, and if all parts are evenly distributed around the center of gravity, then the structure will be stable. By locating a structure's center of gravity, an engineer can tell if the structure is stable or unbalanced. Leaning structures can be stable if they are balanced around their center of gravity. Take a yardstick or broom handle like I have, and hold it horizontally with one finger holding up each end like this. Then slowly move your fingers in towards each other until they touch. It should be somewhere around the middle. Where they meet is the center of gravity. Now let's see what happens when I place a weight on one end of the stick. Now do the same exercise. What did you observe? Pause this video to think about and discuss with your family what you think might be happening here. The added weight put more mass on one end of the stick and so when you moved your fingers together, your finger closer to the weight shouldn't move as far. Otherwise, the weight wouldn't have enough support and the gravity would pull down the stick, making it fall to the ground. Some materials work well in buildings when they are used in a particular way, and work badly when used in other ways. Let's take TP rolls as an example. What is the best way to set a heavy book on top of a cardboard tube without crushing it? If you have some rolls lying around, give it a try and see what you think. Placed upright, the cardboard tubes are structurally sound because there are solid walls going all the way down from the top to the bottom to support any weight on top. Also, because the walls have a circular cross section, the forces are spread evenly throughout the structure. No part of any wall is loaded more than any other. If you place the tube horizontally and try standing things on it, the walls of the tube collapse under the compression. That's because the curved cardboard walls are too thin to bear the load and to channel the forces to the ground. Now it's time for the design challenge. The challenge for you to complete is to build the tallest, freestanding tower that you can that holds a tennis ball or other similarly shaped and weighted object. Here are the materials I will be using today. I will use the principles of structural engineering that we learned earlier and you can watch as I build my own trophy tower. Thank you so much for watching Hagley's first Virtual Science Saturday, part of our Hagley at Home series. 
If you completed the challenge, don't forget to upload on social media and tune in next time for our next installment of Science Saturday with a brand new challenge. Special thanks go to Young, Conaway, Stargate, and Taylor, LLP, for sponsoring this program. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for even more Hagley at Home content.